Well, I didn't know no, him yeah. until he came. I put an advertisement in the paper for somebody to come and teach the children in return for their board and lodging. And we had lots of answers, even from France. But we chose Eric because we thought he'd be there. He sounded as if he'd be there the longest time. Mm. Little did we know, he was with us for 30 years. <laughs> And, and he it, taught the children. The girls never went to school. The boys did that. So he taught them in the house. Yes. He he was a he was a famous Irish writer, wasn't he? Yes, the Taylor and Anstey. That was his most famous one. Did you, did he do many more? Yes, he did write, and he wrote for the radio. And then he was also great with his hands. And I was in the antique business for a while. That's another of my enterprises. And I used to sort of go around the country and sometimes in ancient houses, you know, they'd be completely abandoned. I'd find stuff. On one occasion I found, what, an oil painting under some bed with a spike up through it. And I brought it home and Eric fixed it. You wouldn't know there was a thing wrong with it. It was a, a Murillo, I thought. And I brought it over to Millers of Clifton because they had an art gallery. Yeah. It turned out to be one of Maria's pupils. Oh, okay. But I got 40 pounds for it, which was a fortune in those days. And then various other things. And I used to buy things too sometimes, actually, in Dublin. On the quays there were antique shops and, you know, Eric always fixed them up beautifully. He was very, very clever with his hands. So you obviously, he started into the family more or less then, did he? Yeah, in he the was end, one eh? of the family. In fact, he really took over the place. I think eventually people thought we only lived here because uh, he allowed it. <laughs> because he allowed and it. He, there was a photograph of him with our dog. He used to take her for walks. And yes, the caption says, Eric with his dog. And the dog was rather funny, sitting in the middle of the road, a long way behind him, as though saying, I'm not your bloody dog. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Did he, he die here, he did? Yeah, he died. He, he died, there. yeah. And where is he buried? In Napa. In Napa. And you know, he'd lived with us for all that time, and we never knew what religion he was. I had to phone his sister and ask. So was he religious? He wasn't religious, really, no? Wasn't what? Religious. God, no. no. But that's another person I forgot to say. My great friend was Sergeant Meehan and his wife. Mm. And I got to know them through the Tibetans because I'd be asking him, you know, what should I do and can they do this and that. And on one occasion he said, you must meet my wife. I'm sure you'd get on. And we became best friends from then on. So for years and years. They were my friends. And then when Eric died, who should I ring but Sean? What'll I do, I said. Eric's died. Oh, just proceed as usual, he said, as though people died in our house every day. <laughs>